back, this is Charles for a course, and today we're going to be going over some actual SAT questions. Um, and these are going to be utilizing the techniques we've worked on uh, in the previous videos on verb tense, subject verb agreement, and modifiers. So if you haven't checked those out, please do so. I'll make sure to uh, put the links in the description there. Um, so again, with a lot of verb tense issues, it's not just verb tense, but they're going to layer in subject verb agreement. Um, and then um, make it difficult to identify the subject using modifiers. So um, we'll kind of be combining all these techniques we have discussed um, to answer these questions. Um, so again, yeah, try and apply these as you go. If you want to pause before I um, you know, give you the answer, um, please do so. I think that would be quite useful for you. All right, so uh, just a quick note. Uh, this is taken from uh, the digital PDF version of test one from the College Board. If you're doing the Blue Book version, it might be slightly uh, different um, because the Blue Book version is adaptive, uh, where the PDF version is obviously just set. So if you want to follow along at home and do these, um, you know, just make sure you're using that PDF version. Okay, so this is taken from uh, module one, and this is question 23. So. In 1637, the price of tulips skyrocketed in Amsterdam with single bulbs of rare varieties selling for up to the equivalent of 200,000 in today's US dollars. Some historians blank that this tulip mania was the first instance of an asset bubble which occurs when investors drive prices to highs not supported by actual demand. So the first thing, uh, you know, when you're doing these on, you know, an entire practice test or, you know, the real test, uh, you know, these are gonna be intermixed with uh, different question types. You look at your answer choices and you see claiming, claim, having claimed, and to claim. You think, okay, clearly this is a verb tense question. So we now look at the passage and you're looking for sort of contextual clues that would help you identify which verb tense you need here. So the first thing you see is in 1637 and then you have uh, the past tense verb skyrocketed. Uh, you also see the word was. And you think, okay, this must be past tense. But be careful. The SAT, you know, they're trying to trick you here. Um, and they, they do this a lot. Um, so don't just look at other verbs in the sentence necessarily um, because sentences don't need to have, uh, you know, the same verb tense in them. And um, anybody that gives you the advice, uh, you know, just look at other verb tenses in the sentence, uh, you know, doesn't really know what they're talking about. So we look at this claim, some historians blank. So yes, I mean... The thing the historians are talking about happened in the past tense, right? It happened in 1637. But the claims the historians are making, right, is something that's true in the present. And for true statements of fact, we need just simple present tense. So it's some historians claim. Now, in this case, they don't have claim and claims, right? They just have one subject verb agreement uh, kind of conjugation for the simple present tense. So it's got to be claim. But obviously, historians are going to be plural, right, multiple historians. Um, so yeah, it's going to be historians claim. If it was one historian, it would be, you know, this person claims, but in this case, we don't even have that option, so they've made it easy for us. So it's just our only option for the simple present tense. All right, looking at question 26, and again, this is taken from module one of the test one PDF version from the College Board. Okay, so the classic children's board game, Shoots and Ladders, is a version of an ancient Nepalese game, Paramapada Sapanapata. In both games, players encounter good or bad spaces while traveling along a path. Landing on one of the good spaces blanks a player to skip ahead and arrive closer to the end goal. Okay. Um, you know, I haven't yet made a video on punctuation. That will be coming soon. Now, if you look at uh, the part before the semicolon, the, the major use of a semicolon is to connect two independent clauses. Now, you can think of an independent clause as basically like a simple sentence. Um, so a semicolon is essentially like a period. All right, so in both games, players encounter good or bad spaces while traveling along a path. Okay, so in the previous sentence, you have the traveling along a path, and you think, okay, maybe I need the ing verb. But here, we're just talking another true statement of fact about the rules. So landing on one of the good spaces, um, we're talking about a rule here. It seems like, once again, we need simple present tense. However, we have some issues here. You will notice, if you saw the video on modifying clauses, we have a prepositional phrase, landing on one of the good spaces. 
right? So the subject here is actually landing. The act of landing is a singular subject. So we look at our simple present options, which are allows or allow, because landing is a singular subject, the act of landing. So it is landing allows a player to skip ahead and arrive closer to the end goal. Okay, so out of the first two questions, we have had two simple present tense um, answer choices, right? So the first, uh, the first question, right? We didn't have any subject verb agreement issues in our answer choices. The second one we did, um, but as I said, yeah, the simple present tense is going to be the most common. Um, you know, again, it's not always going to be the choice, but again, just yeah, keep it simple when it comes to verb tense questions. Okay, let's now look at uh, module two. Okay, so uh, question 19. When writing The Other Black Girl, novelist Zakia Delila Harris drew on her own experiences working at a publishing office. The award-winning book is Harris's first novel, but her writing blank honored before. At the age of 12, she entered a contest to have a story published in American Girl magazine and won. So which choice completes the text? Uh, so that it conforms to the conventions of standard English. Once again, we look at our answer choices. Clearly, this is a verb tense question. Okay, so the award-winning book is... Um, so we saw an example of, you know, talking about literature on uh, the verb tense uh, video. So yeah, when you're talking about true statements of fact about, uh, you know, conclusion about a novel or just a statement of fact about a novel, we need present tense. But we shift here, but her writing blank honored before. And you think, okay, we have before here. It's gotta be past tense. Her writing was honored before. In this case, we don't have was. Uh, so the other thing, let's think about what the subject is here. Her writing, okay, we have a singular subject here. Her writing right away, okay, it cannot be were, right? Because were would be, um, uh, a plural conjugation, her writing have been, her writing has been, or her writing are. Okay, we need a past tense, so we're kind of stuck with were, have been, or has been. Because it is singular, right, it needs to be her writing has been. Um, so again, a good example, you know, even if you don't know, uh, you know, the names of the verb tenses, and honestly, I don't expect most students to um, know the names, um, you can use subject verb agreements and just kind of your basic knowledge of, you know, past, present, and future tenses um, to eliminate answer choices, right? So, yeah, her writing was, so in this case, uh, we don't have that option, so we're stuck with uh, kind of the past progressive there. So her writing has been honored before. Okay, looking at question 23. In his 1963 exhibition, Exposition of Music, Electronic Television, Korean-American artist Nam Joon Pike showed how television images could be manipulated to express an artist's perspective. Today, Pike blank considered the first video artist. Okay, so we've seen this on multiple questions, right? They have a lot of references to, you know, dates in the past, and a lot of students are like, oh, I need the past tense. But we have, uh, you know, the, the reference to the present. Today, clearly, we need... Present tense, okay, we have, uh, you know, singular third person, Pike, so it must be is, right? It's not Pike will be, had been, or Pike was, right? We need uh, that singular verb for uh, Pike in the present tense, must be is. So uh, out of the last four questions, three of them have been uh, just simple tenses. As I said, 60, 70% of questions just keep it simple, and especially that simple present. All right, our last example here. In order to prevent non-native fish species from moving freely between the Mediterranean and Red Seas, marine biologist Bella Galil has proposed that a saline lock system be installed along the Suez Canal in Egypt's Great Bitter Lakes. The lock would increase the salinity and blank a natural barrier most marine creatures would be unable to cross. Okay, so... This lock has not been built yet, right? And we see, okay, uh, we have the wood here, so it's gonna be a future tense. So the lock would increase, um, or the lock is going to, but we have wood here. Um, it's kind of the hypothetical, um, not the lock will, but the lock would. So a lock would increase. Would applies to both verbs here. So it would increase 
and it would create a natural barrier. Now, if it if we didn't have the wood, right, it would be the lock, you know, creates if it was already built. Um, clearly, it's not going to be creating or um, uh, created because, uh, you know, those don't, um, you know, match with the idea that it's, you know, something that hasn't happened yet. So we just need, yeah, that simple present tense to combine with uh, the wood. Okay. So, yeah, those are the five uh, verb questions and subject verb agreement questions um, that are on SAT test one. Um, so, again, you can see how modifiers and kind of all those time references and, uh, you know, especially the present tenses or sorry, the simple tenses are very important for these types of questions. Uh, real quick, I just want to talk about one more question type. And this isn't actually... Um, a verb tense question, but it appears like a verb tense question if you look at the answers. And I just want to preview something we'll be talking about in a later video. This is actually a sentence construction, uh, and in particular a participle phrase question. So, um, if you look at the answer choices, you have forces, to force, forcing, and forced, and they all look okay, like different uh, verb tenses, right? Uh, but if we read this, so in winter, the diets of Japanese macaques, also known as snow monkeys, are influenced more by food availability than by food preference. Although the monkeys prefer to eat vegetation and land-dwelling invertebrates, those food sources may become unavailable because of, ex of extensive snow and ice cover. Blank the monkeys to hunt for more marine animals in any streams that have not frozen over. Okay. So we're going to use some of the techniques uh, we worked on with modifiers. So we have an introductory clause here, right? Although the monkeys prefer to eat vegetation and land-dwelling invertebrates. Okay, so we can take that out. Our simple sentence here, the independent clause is, those food sources may become unavailable because of extensive snow and ice cover. Now you look, we have a comma. Now, there's a few options. It could be connecting two independent clauses, but to connect two independent clauses, you need a comma and a fanboy. A fanboy is for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so. We don't have the option here. Okay, so we know, okay, this is not a case of connecting two independent clauses with a comma. We didn't think, okay, it must be some sort of dependent clause. Um, so we think, how can we do that? Forces the monkeys to hunt for marine animals in any streams that have not frozen over. To force the monkeys to hunt for marine animals. Forcing the monkeys to hunt for marine animals. Or force the monkeys. Um, you can see our answer here is forcing, right? Uh, forcing turns this into a dependent clause just sort of tacked on um, at you know, the end of that sentence. And again, participle um, kind of clause at the end of... Um, the independent clause, uh, the, those food sources. Um, so again, we kind of introduced uh, participle phrases in uh, the modifying videos. We'll talk more about that when it comes to um, sentence construction questions and also uh, punctuation questions, uh, but just something to kind of keep your eye out for. Um, you know, you might have something that, like this that appears to be a verb tense question, uh, but it's actually more of like how you construct the sentence and the punctuation and uh, word type you would need there with the, the participle clause. All right, everybody, that's it for me today. I hope you found the video useful. As always, if you felt like you learned something, please subscribe so you can make sure to catch um, future videos. Uh, the next thing we will be discussing is uh, sentence construction, uh, which has a lot of overlap with punctuation. Um, so again, with all these concepts, you know, you will have a pretty solid sense of correctness. But I think just kind of, uh, you know, doing this review, uh, number one, builds confidence, which is very important. Uh, and number two will help speed up your responses as, you know, you're doing process of elimination on a lot of these grammar issues. Um, so you'll have more time to actually, um, you know, devote to uh, more difficult questions. Um, so, you know, I recognize studying for the SAT isn't necessarily uh, the most uh, you know, interesting to do with your time, but if it was fun to study, everyone would get a good score. So again, keep at it. Um, you will see uh, the benefits as you're uh, doing those practice tests. So, all right, have a good day.